What's going on everyone? Phil here for KO Gaming, and I'm back from a four-day trip to the city of Seattle. Now, I actually live in Seattle, but I'm in the outskirts. I'm in a small suburb that isn't in the main city area. In fact, I live roughly around 45 minutes to an hour from where all the happening stuff is in Seattle. For example, the Space Needle or the Pike Place Market or the Waterfront. Those are all things that are neat and kind of well-known as touristy stuff in the area, but I don't live nearby that. So, being that, I wanted to take a little bit of a mini vacation. I spent four days with my girlfriend going around the city of Seattle and doing all the touristy stuff. But in addition, we figured this would be the perfect opportunity to check out Pokemon Go in a big city environment. What you're going to see following is a slideshow of different pictures that I took around the city of Seattle while playing Pokemon Go, showing you my different experiences with the game and kind of outlining my day-to-day -day progress over the course of the week. Now, please be a little bit forgiving of me here because I don't know how to take video on my iPhone 6s yet and in addition to that Pokemon Go eats so much of the battery life of your phone that if I were actually going to take video while trying to play this game I probably would have had to have several backup batteries with me in order to get it happening so really I think the best way to go is just to go with a slideshow so that's what you're gonna see without further ado here's my Pokemon Go experience over the past week First off, I think it needs to be said that some people are a lot more lucky than others when it comes to playing Pokemon Go. This is the view from my actual house in-game. There is nothing, no Pokestops, no gyms, and no wild Pokemon anywhere near me. In fact, I could probably walk about a mile in any direction before I'll even get close to seeing anything in-game. So apparently, Pokemon Go is not a huge thing in my local neighborhood. So, when I was going to Seattle, I said this will be my opportunity to check out this game for the very first time and hopefully get some real action. So actually, the night before that I knew I was going to be going into the city, I actually put down a piece of incense which summons Pokemon to your house. Basically, you don't have to walk around the Pokemon come to you and over the course of that night I caught about four wild Pokemon and a few different ones where I actually were able to uh, transfer them to the professor so he gave me extra candy for each of those Pokemons so that I could level up the existing ones that I had and this is a screenshot of what I actually had by the end of that very first night before I actually set out for the city and so after a quick breakfast at IHOP, my girlfriend and I set out on the road to Seattle. Now, if you want to see any of our actual vlogging of our trip, you can see that over on my other channel, The King of Hate Vlogs, where I uploaded over 60 separate vlogs of all kinds of different stuff that we ran into, including showing off our hotel room and the like. Right here, you can see this is our setup. I actually had my laptop set up next to our big screen TV, and we were able to watch DVDs all week on the big TV, which was pretty awesome. We got caught up on a lot of anime and stuff that we've been watching lately, as well as having some pretty awesome views from walking around the city and seeing some cool stuff. Our first night, we decided to check out an Italian restaurant called The Pink Door. It's actually a restaurant that doesn't have its name on the front. It's a little bit of a swanky, hipster-style joint, and I ended up having some pretty awesome food, including grilled octopus, which I never had before, as well as this really awesome Alaskan halibut chef special, and this amazing berry turnover dessert. Now, as we were eating all of this, a crazy show was going on with some girl who was swinging from the rafters doing acrobatic acts. I really didn't know what the heck was happening, but while we were there, we opened up our Pokemon Go. Sad to say, it just didn't work. It was having server errors, and we weren't really able to find anything in the game. So this first night out, we really weren't able to do much, at least when we went out for dinner. But when we went back to our hotel room that night, it was a totally different story. We actually realized there were three Pokestops sitting directly next to our hotel, which at least at one of which we were in radius of at any time, so we could continuously activate a Pokestop. I decided to put a lure on that Pokestop, which attracted wild Pokemon. And then the chaos began. While we were watching Monday Night Raw and I was having a drink, the Pokemon started coming to us non-stop. Of course, it started off with low-level ones like Weedle, who invaded our bed while I was sitting there, but it was pretty much a non-stop onslaught of Pokemon I'd never even seen in the game before because the game hadn't worked for me previously. It was so awesome that I caught so many Pidgeys, I was actually able to uh, uh, morph or uh, evolve my Pidgey into a Pidgeotto just that very first night of playing for about three hours in bed 
bed, which was pretty damned awesome. What you can see here is a listing of all the Pokemon that I had had after only that first night of playing, which is pretty crazy when you really think about it. Just putting down a lure next to three Pokestops can lure this wide variety of Pokemon to you, and it was really a lot of fun. I leveled up tons of levels while we were watching wrestling and anime, and it was just an overall really good time. It accentuated our vacation experience for that first day. Now, something really funny that happened actually happened later that night when I had to use the restroom, and all of a sudden, I was getting attacked while on the can. In fact, right here, you can see three pictures of Pokemon that attacked me in our bathroom, and I actually caught them while taking a dump. Pretty funny, pretty interesting that that can happen. And uh, then, in, in addition to that, I was able to evolve three other Pokemon that same day, simply because there were so many that I had in my inventory at that point. As you can see here, I even went to the Pidgeot level of, of Pidgey, so the third and final level. And then here's another kind of running inventory of the Pokemon that I had in my inventory by the end of that very first night. Pretty crazy and pretty out of control. The next day we woke up refreshed now that we had already been settled into our hotel for the night and we had a night full of Pokemon catching under our wing. We were actually heading off to the Space Needle and the Chihuly Glass Gardens and the Pacific Science Center, that general area that's known as Seattle Center right at the center of the downtown city. It was a beautiful day, the weather was nice, and as we walked over, we opened up our Pokemon Go, and lo and behold, the Seattle Center is rife with Pokemon content. There were po uh, little stops everywhere. There was a gym battles going on. In fact, the actual Space Needle itself was a Pokemon gym where there was insane amounts of Pokemon battles going on. It was pretty out of control, and quite honestly, it actually got a little out of hand when we were trying to catch Pokemon left and right. And uh, they were showing up in the walkways where people were trying to walk between these things. And it could be kind of daunting, especially when you're fighting certain Pokemon like the Zubat that likes to dodge pretty often. Uh, you know, if you're trying to do this out in the open and people are staring at you like, what are you doing with your phone? Are you stupid? But uh, it was actually quite fun, and it's a hotbed. If you do go to Seattle, I recommend you check out Seattle Center, especially if you're into Pokemon Go. You're going to end up catching a ton of stuff. So anyway, we ended up going from the Space Needle over to the Pacific Science Center, and we checked out this really cool Lego exhibit. I strongly recommend if you go there within the next month or so, it's still going to be up. It's some really awesome artistic style stuff done with Legos, and I really think you'll like that exhibit. They didn't even let us film in there, but I was able to take a few pics that I integrated into the video here. But while we were there, we also went into the museum style wing of the Pacific Science Center, and then the Pokemon attacked. Wild waves of Psyducks and uh, Staryus and Oddishes and all kinds of Pokemon kind of just jumped in front of us. And even one glitched out. There was a, a, a Sparrow or uh, Spiro, excuse me, that jumped in front of me and it actually glitched out my game where you got extremely close to the camera and the game just kind of conked out and I had to restart it. But there were tons of Pokemon overall that we actually caught while we were out that day and it was pretty crazy. Later that evening, we decided to go out for dinner again, and as we were walking, my first egg ever hatched, and inside was a Pikachu, which was pretty cool, because I hadn't actually run into one up to that point. So then we sat down at Rocco's. If you're not aware, Rocco's is a really awesome pizzeria that makes New York-style pizza. And let me tell you, being from the East Coast and only moving to the West Coast two years ago, I crave East Coast style pizza because no one out here makes it. This is the only place we've actually found that makes a New York style pie. It's absolutely amazing. It's very expensive, but it's worth every single dollar. So as we sat down, we had some pretty awesome drinks, some really, really delicious food. We opened up our Pokemon Go games to realize there were three other Pokestops right next to the restaurant. So we put down a lure or two, we were constantly hitting these Pokestops, we were catching tons and tons of Pokemon and adding them to our inventory. So again, we were able to get tons of Pokemon just by a sitting and, and kind of doing stuff you would normally do on a vacation. It was kind of dual use of our time. While we were waiting for our food, we were playing this really fun game and things worked out really well. Later on that night, again in the hotel room, we were watching some Dragon Ball, and as we were doing that, we put down some more lures on the local Pokestops, and again, the Pokemon kept coming and coming and coming. What you're going to see here is the uh, day two kind of recap of what Pokemon I had in my inventory. As you can see, every single day, my Pokemon inventory drastically changed because of the wide amount of Pokemon that were available in all of these different areas. Pretty sweet, and by the end of that day, I had a pretty formidable repertoire of Pokemon under my wing. 
Day 3 started with a bang. We went out once again to get some yummy food for breakfast, found a cool local eatery, I believe it was called like CJ's or something like that. And it was pretty good, I got Eggs Benedict. As we were sitting there, we played a little bit of Pokemon Go, although admittedly there wasn't too much going on in that area. And then we walked down to the waterfront. Now there's a lot of stuff down at the waterfront of Seattle, including Pike Place Market. One of the places that I absolutely love at Pike Place Market is called Golden Age Collectibles. They sell comic books, they sell manga, they have all kinds of pop culture stuff in there, posters, they actually have movie scripts that you can buy and read and collect. And it's a really awesome place. I strongly recommend you check it out at Pike Place Market if you do ever go there. So we walked around there. We also walked down to the waterfront and checked out the aquarium. It was pretty awesome. The, bo the one bummer though, Pokemon Go didn't work all day while we were at the market and we were at the aquarium. It just didn't work whatsoever. So unfortunately, even though we spent a whole day out where we may have found some unique stuff, we got nothing out of it because the servers wouldn't connect and we got nothing but errors every time we tried to open the game. Later that night, we decided to actually stay nearby our hotel to get some food. We went to a next door burger bar called Relish, and I got one of the most insane burgers I think I've ever gotten in my entire life, the mac and cheese burger, which was delicious but impossible to eat. I basically fell apart and I had to eat it with a fork and knife because it was so ginormous. But as we were eating at Relish, once again, boom, polka stops left and right. And it was pretty awesome because yet again, we were able to catch tons of Pokemon while waiting for our food, something that normally you just kind of sit around and maybe do small talk, but, you know, this was cool that we were able to do something completely different while waiting. So when we finally got back to the hotel, I realized that my sunblock really hadn't been working very effectively for the week. As you can see, my neck and face were pink like a lobster, and I was starting to itch uncontrollably. That kind of sucks. So after yet another night of sitting there in the hotel room, this was our third and final night in Seattle, we actually were able to catch tons and tons more Pokemon, which were really cool. And... This was awesome. I actually opened up one of my 10 kilometer eggs. It hatched right there in the hotel room. Don't ask me how because we weren't moving. Apparently the game thought that I was walking even though I wasn't. And I actually hatched, that's right, a Chansey. From what I'm to understand, this is an incredibly rare Pokemon. It's not very strong, but it's a damage sponge. I mean, just look at its HP right here. Uh, pretty high in comparison to other Pokemon and so I guess what you're supposed to do is use it if you have like a really tough opponent You can toss the Chansey out there to absorb lots and lots of hits while your other Pokemon are recovering I'm not exactly sure how it works yet But my Chansey is basically pretty cool and it's cool to get a unique Pokemon like that from a 10 kilometer egg It's also important to note that that night I did my very first gym battle against a gym that was right next door to our hotel and I actually was successful in my very first fight, although as soon as I won the gym battle, the, the whole thing got taken over again almost instantaneously, and I really never went back to try it again. I also did a lot of evolutions, including a, uh, my uh, Ghastly turning into a Haunter, as you can see here, and also I believe it was my Nidorino or my Nidorin turned into a Nidorino, one of the middle evolutions of that kind of Pokemon, which was pretty cool. So once again, tons of Pokemon added to my inventory, lots of evolutions, and a lot of fun at our third and final day at the hotel. But that wasn't the end of our trip, because even though we were checking out, our final day, we decided to head to the Woodland Park Zoo on the way back home, even though it's the opposite direction. We wanted to do something fun before we returned home for the normal life resuming. And when we showed up, wow, let me show you, boom. The entire zoo was Pokestops, and it was pretty damned awesome because we got a ridiculous amount of new Pokemon while walking around the zoo. Now again, if you want to check out the actual zoo, I did tons of vlogs of it over on my vlogging channel, The King of Hate Vlogs, but for the purposes of this video, there were a ridiculous ton of different Pokemon, Pokestops, and stuff to be had inside of the zoo. Although I will say, I didn't really see many people playing Pokemon Go while we were in there. I don't know if maybe they just don't want to hide it, and at this point they're trying to be like super duper on the down low about it, but there weren't a lot of people who were really using their phones like that in there, so I don't know how many people were actually playing the game. But we caught a ton of Pokemon, and then finally when we returned home, whew, I sat down and we went to, out to dinner one more time, actually. The, this, this place actually was right next to, yet again, more Pokestops, and we caught a ton of Pokemon. And here is my final tally of Pokemon for the week. I'm going to kind of slowly scroll through it here so you can actually see. My highest level ended up being a Vaporeon, which had over a thousand combat, uh, a combat power. 
while uh, some of these other Pokemon that I have were high up there ended up being kind of evolutions of things that were just in the neighborhood a lot. Like, for example, that Pidgeot there. There were so many Pidgeys just all over Seattle that I just kept constantly collecting them and evolving them and collecting them and evolving them until they got high enough level that it ended up being my best card. Same thing there with the Hypnos. There were just so many Drowsies around that I just kept putting them into each other and they became really uh, powerful. As you can see here as well, a wide variety. It's not just like it was one kind of Pokemon that I kept running into. Uh, there was a lot of plant style, there were bug style, there were psychic style, there were flying style, there were water style, even ghost style. I mean, oh, a pretty good variety. The only thing I would say is not a lot of elementals, as you can see as I'm going through the listing. Uh, there's not too much, for example, no, f no real flame Pokemon besides my Ponita. Uh, there weren't really any ice Pokemon. Besides Pikachu, I didn't get any, any kind of, like, lightning Pokemon. It really did seem to be, like, more wild-style, animalistic Pokemon rather than some of those. Although, again, I did end up getting so many Gastlys that I ended up getting a Haunter. So, there really was a pretty crazy variety. Oh, yeah, and by the end, I actually had gotten another Chansey because my second 10-kilometer egg hatched. So, now I actually have two different Chanseys and I have, like, 29 candies for them. So, I can evolve one of them to be, like, insanely high HP and just be a crazy damage sponge if and when I ever run into another Poke Center. So, here's some overall tips that I think I learned while during my time in Seattle playing Pokemon Go. Number one, play it safe. And what I mean by that is, if you're in a major city, chances are you're going to find enough Pokestops and enough gyms to have a lot of Pokemon around at all times. Using lures, you definitely shouldn't need to actually go out of your way to find any wild Pokemon. I've heard all these horror stories of people falling off of cliffs, getting hit by cars, and quite honestly, I don't understand how that's possible, because if you just use a lure or an incense or whatever, the Pokemon come to you. Now, I know that a lot of people may not want to put any money into the game or play it enough that you can earn these items for free, but I found that using these items greatly accentuated my gameplay experience. Never did we really walk out of our way to follow the footprints of a Pokemon and try to catch one that we didn't have. They pretty much all came to us during the course of the normal stuff we were doing during our tourism trip. So... My recommendation is, don't go out of your way to play Pokemon Go. Make Pokemon Go become integrated into your already existing routine. If you go to restaurants, if you go to work, if you go to these things, those are the times that maybe you should be playing Pokemon Go and don't go out of your way to try to get stuff that normally you couldn't get. When you go on vacation or when you're doing a special event, those are the times that you could do this while you're doing that stuff and you could probably catch some really fun stuff that normally you wouldn't. I don't understand these stories of people going completely crazy trying to catch Pokemon. Pokemon, I mean, the game just released. You realize that it's going to be a long time for you to catch all these Pokemon, right? So, don't go crazy and be safe. Number two, and probably the biggest tip I can give you about the game, turn off that altered reality switch. There is a switch on the battle screen that you can use to push, and if you push it, it'll go from that kind of altered reality state to using the camera of your phone, and instead just go to a virtual field where you can catch the Pokemon. First of all, it won't wiggle around, so therefore the Pokemon won't be harder to catch. Number two, it dramatically saves battery life. I'm telling you, like, it doubled the amount of battery life we were getting on our phones when we turned off the stupid altered reality. Yeah, it's cool the first few times you see it, especially if you want to get a cool shot of you at some landmark catching a Pokemon, but after the gimmick wears off and you realize that actually for, for practicality of playing the game, it's easier to catch Pokemon without it, and you're going to get double the gameplay out of your mobile device, it just makes sense to leave it off, and it just really is a gimmick at the end of the day. And now for some gripes that I currently have with Pokemon Go. I think a lot of you are going to know about some of these already, especially if you've been playing the game. Number one, the game is unstable and full of game crashes and bugs. I could probably, if I had counted, probably would have covered about 75 to 100 times during the course of the week that I was trying to play Pokemon Go, and either the game completely froze when I was trying to catch a Pokemon, or the game just would not load, or there was a server error, or the game completely crashed. It's hugely buggy, so you have to understand that this game is not polished. It's incredibly popular right now, but I think people are just kind of saying, well, we're going to forgive all these game bugs and issues because it's a free game. I think that they need to do a much better job to patch up this game and make it a lot more stable because when you can't play about one third of the time that you want to play, that's a huge issue. Number two, the game sucks the living shit out of your battery. It doesn't matter what model iPhone you have. If you're playing it on an iPad, it eats the living crap out of your mobile device's battery. In fact, it was so bad 
that while the two hours that we were actually at the zoo, my battery went from 100% to 30% while playing Pokemon Go. So just having the phone open for two hours with the game running ate 70% of my battery life. That's insane. It's almost necessary and mandatory for you to have a backup battery charger with you in order to play Pokemon Go. It just doesn't seem viable to be able to play this game for any extended period of time unless you have an alternate means to charge your mobile device back up. That's a huge problem. And then, by the way, if I had the altered reality on, that also would have been totally worse and even killed the battery even worse. I had it off during that time period. So they really need to do a better job of finding a way to make this game more viable and lasting longer so that people will want to play longer. Right now, I get the feeling a lot of people only play for a little bit until their phone dies, and that's a major problem. So overall, playing Pokemon Go over our trip to Seattle was a lot of fun. Yeah, there were some road bumps with the game crashing and our batteries dying quite a lot. But at the same time, spending the night watching fun shows and anime in the hotel room while we were catching an endless plethora and variety of Pokemon, being able to evolve them to all the higher states because we kept catching them so much, I mean, it was just really cool and it added to the overall vacation experience that we had. I actually can't wait until the next time we get to step out and do something for a trip and see in another city or another area how are the Pokemon there? Are there a lot of Pokestops? You know what I mean? It's going to be really cool to see. Is it different in, in different areas? We've actually heard that different areas of the world have different Pokemon that are considered local or common so maybe let's say we go to California next year, maybe we'll find all kinds of Pokemon that we couldn't catch here at home in Washington State. Pretty neat. So overall the game was a fun experience that added to our trip. We're very much looking forward to playing it in the future and hopefully you enjoyed this video. Oh yeah, and now back to me sitting around at home catching nothing for the next year. Oh boy! Thanks for watching everyone, I really hope that you enjoyed this video, something a little different. And if you did, please consider giving it a like here on YouTube. In addition, please spread the word about KO Gaming amongst your friends, because word of mouth is key when it comes to success on YouTube. Please check out the video description where you can find a link to the playlist of vlogging that I actually did while we were going throughout Seattle. That's the non-gaming portion of our trip if you are interested. As well as a link to my Loot Crate discount code where you can save 10% on any new subscription. And of course to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. Thanks a lot for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time here on KO Gaming.